Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. has absolutely turned up the heat on American League pitchers on the recent road trip. Brennan was 12 for 27, a 444 batting average, and he led the Tigers to four wins on the road trip. Tonight it's back home as the Seattle Mariners come to town. Welcome to downtown Detroit. Game one in this series featuring the M's and your Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers baseball. Mario and Pemba, glad to have you with us tonight. Ron Allen will join us in a moment here. The Tigers are glad to be back home, but they did well on the road, winning four of six through Chicago and then Texas. And there's no doubt the offense was the big reason why. Now, while the offense was good on the road trip, let's even go back to the last homestand in the last 11 games. The Tigers have won eight of those because of the offense, averaging almost six runs per game and the team batting average over 300 as well. The Tigers and Jim Leland hopeful that the offensive service continues here at home so the Tigers take on the M's in game one stay with us lineups first pitch right around the corner in the meantime we go back to the call Sam studio now and here's Mickey York Tigers and the Seattle Mariners game one in this series here at Comerica Park and if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game make sure you bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and you get yourself a free small order of curly fries. Well, the M's are in town under Eric Wedge who has had them playing some pretty good baseball lately the Tigers the first time they saw him here at Comerica they were struggling not anymore and here is the starting lineup for visiting Seattle it is presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Ichiro is at the top in right field, followed by Brendan Ryan and Adam Kennedy. Miguel Olivo is their cleanup hitter. Franklin Gutierrez in center. Mike Carp. Greg Hallman is in left. Luis Rodriguez, Jack Wilson rounding out 
the starting lineup for Seattle. The scouting report on Justin Verlander is presented tonight by Scott's Lawn Pro. Well, those of you that have watched Verlander pitch this year, you know that he can simply be overpowering, and he has premium stuff to do that. He also has a lot of confidence when he's on the mound. He believes he's better than most guys he goes up against, and that's a big part of what he does, and believe it or not, uh, that fourth pitch he added last year, that slider, it's getting pretty good these days. Let's take a look at the Tigers defensively presented by Beaumont Health System. You've got Dirks in left, Jackson in center, Bosch is in right, Kelly, Peralta, Rayburn, Cabrera. They round out the infield. Avila behind the plate, and you know that Justin is on the mound. Here are the season numbers on Justin Verlander, who comes in tonight with a sparkling ERA of 3.04. Opponents hitting just 195 against Justin Verlander. He can dominate the left handers, and he can dominate the right handed hitters. As well. Verlander coming into this one. Lifetime against Seattle. Seven and six. And he'll uh, have to deal with Mr. Ichiro tonight, who's getting ready to lead things off. The Seattle Mariners, two games over the 500 mark out of the American League's West Division at 32 and 30. Nice night for baseball. Cloudy and overcast, but uh, the temperature uh, very comfortable. 69 degrees tonight. We are ready for baseball. Ichiro Suzuki leads it off for Ichiro, batting just 256 this year. He has not homered this season and he has knocked in 20. Verlander ready to go to work, and here we go. First pitch of the ball game is grounded to second base. That was easy. Rayburn throws him out, one away. One pitch and one out. And that'll bring up Brendan Ryan, the shortstop for Seattle. Verlander has won each of his last four decisions, making it five in a row tonight with a victory. He can do that. Ryan batting 256. Only two for 18 this year against Detroit pitching. The Tigers have seen Seattle here at Comerica and then also out at Safeco Field. Strike one to Brendan Ryan. Seattle has defeated Detroit three straight times, and they've won four of the six between these two teams. Threw that one right by him at 94. 0 and 2 on Ryan. Nice, easy delivery does Verlander have for a power pitcher. There's no violence in him when delivering that ball home. Ryan has not homered yet this year. 19 driven in. And he fouls one straight back. Verlander's last start was a dandy in Chicago. He gave up two runs over eight innings and needed that home run in the ninth by Miguel Cabrera to allow him to get a victory in that game. His effort in the bottom half of the eighth inning when he struck out Carlos Quentin with that 100 mile per hour fastball with the runner on third. Less than two outs was an amazing pitch. And again, the 0 2. Missed it inside, 1 and 2 on Ryan. Still fascinating how hard Verlander can throw in the ninth inning. Not too many can do it. We've seen it in his two no hitters, where he just keeps getting stronger and stronger. Here's the 1 2. Threw the bat at that ball and fouls it away. It's a slider uh, that I was talking about in the pitching profile on Verlander. It's the last pitch that he added to his repertoire. You can see that it's got a little tighter spin to it. It's not big like the curveball, and Ryan did a very nice job of spoiling a very good pitch by Verlander. Can you imagine when this guy masters that slider? So that means in the back of the hitter's mind, you got to deal with the fastball at around 98 to 100 when it tops out. Good curve, good change, and now a slider. The one two fouled it off. I mean, how do you approach a guy like this? Well, you just kind of hope he has an off night, really, because when he's on top of his game as a hitter, and I'm speaking from experience, you just try to get one hit off guys like Verlander and beat up some of the other guys in the rotation. And because he doesn't give up lots of hits, it's a very difficult day most nights when Verlander's on the mound. One and two. Fouled away again. 
Ryan has the Eric Wedge mustache going tonight. The old handlebars mustache. A lot of guys with a lot of facial hair this year in the big leagues, all around the league. Lots of beards, lots of goatees, a lot of hair on the chin. He held up. Two balls, two strikes on Ryan. Except for the New York Yankees. There's the skipper. Eric Wedge doing a marvelous job in Seattle this year with his mustache. This will be the ninth pitch coming up in this at bat. And it sails outside three and two. So after Verlander got Ichiro on one pitch, Ryan is giving him fits. Adam Kennedy, the veteran infielder, waiting on deck. Bouncing ball left side. It gets by Kelly deep in the hole. Peralta. That'll be an infield hit for Brendan Ryan. Outstanding at bat by Ryan. And the Tigers defensively have fallen asleep. They sure have. And Ryan goes to second base standing up. Not only did he have a good at bat, but a good heads up play. Johnny Peralta was over in the hole when he threw that ball back toward first base. And then you have Ryan Rayburn who was headed over there backing up and he's also continuing to walk toward second base and you could see Rayburn with his head down Ryan noticed that and made a beeline for second base. So a mental miscue on the infield for the Tigers nobody covering second and Ryan just cruises in. One on one out here's Kennedy. Verlander missing low. Kennedy batting 278. He's hit five home runs. This is not a Seattle lineup tonight that will hit too many long balls. Olivo is their team leader on deck with eight. Two and zero. Oh. And their other power hitter in their lineup, Justin Smoke, the very talented switch hitting first baseman, uh, he's getting a a night off at least at the beginning of the game uh, by his manager Eric Wedge. Two and zero on Kennedy and a good hitter's count. And he pops it up. First base side of the infield Cabrera. Kennedy is out two gone. So it's just a straight single for Ryan. No error call on that play. He takes second on the throw. Which was to first base. Two gone. Here comes Olivo the cleanup hitter. He's been one of their better hitters. And if you look at his spray chart you, you will see that he loves to hit the ball to left field very seldom does he hit the ball the opposite way. I know Verlander knows that. And let's see how Verlander is going to attack the pool happy Olivo with a runner in scoring position here in the first. Foul straight back on one. Seattle as a team has hit 39 home runs this year and only two teams have hit fewer homers that would be Minnesota and Oakland so power has not been a big part of their offensive scheme this year. Olivo with eight. Good numbers against the Tigers 10 for 20 this season. Breaking ball and a dandy. 0 and 2. And the 0-2 pitch. Missed it high. One ball and two strikes. Verlander making his 14th start of the year. Franklin Gutierrez waiting his turn on deck. Swing and a miss. So Levo goes down and the inning is over. First strike out of the game for Justin Verlander.
big boy Austin Jackson Don Kelly Brennan Bosch are at the top. Miguel Cabrera cleaning up no surprise there Martinez right behind him Dirks in left Peralta Avila and Rayburn rounding it out. Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Doug Fister of the Seattle Mariners get the Bernstein advantage we go to bat for you. Uh, Fister is not going to overpower you but what he is going to do is fill up the strike zone with a lot of quality strikes at the knees and one of the pitches that he added this year was a really good cut fastball that's worked well for him against lefties and righties and his team really just doesn't score a whole lot of runs for him his numbers equate out to much more wins. Yeah that's for certain in fact they're giving him about two and a half runs a game which is not going to win you too many. Jackson starting things off. Austin close to 250. Jackson had 12 hits on the road trip and that's why his average now is creeping up. He and Brennan Bosch both they got busy. On that road trip through Chicago and Texas. Two and one on Jackson. Tiger Catalyst has 18 RBIs. The 2 1. Off the end of the bat. Diving stop at first by Kennedy. Great play. Ooh, what a play. He doesn't even play first base all that often. He's a second baseman by trade. That had double written all over it. And as a first baseman, you're not used to the ball coming down there that aggressively with a right hander in the batter's box. Nice play. So Kennedy has the uniform dirty already on a terrific diving play at first base. Here's Don Kelly. Kelly hit that home run in Texas last night and it looked like the Tigers in that very first inning were going to start to roll again. But Alexi Ogando settled into that one. One ball one strike on Don. It was his first home run of the year and his first since October of last year in that final series against the Orioles. Fister working quickly. Fister's a big guy, 6'8, but he's listed at only 195 out of Merced, California. He's throwing harder these days. That last fastball, 93 by Fister. I don't remember him throwing that hard when we've seen him previously. Soft liner into center, and Don Kelly has a one out hit. Let's take a look at the Seattle Mariners defensively presented by Tim Hortons in the outfield. You've got Hallman, Gutierrez, Suzuki. In the infield, you've got Rodriguez, Ryan, Wilson, Kennedy, and Olivo is putting down the fingers for Doug Fister. Here comes Brendan Bosch. As you might expect, the Tigers had big numbers on the last road trip, specifically in Texas, and Bosch was 7 for 15 in Texas. Monster numbers this year as well against Seattle, almost 500. That's when Brennan was going really well in the month of April. The Tigers saw Seattle twice early in the season. Here are the road trip numbers 444. The 1 0. Fouled straight back. Did some ciphering before the ball game tonight. Did you? Also known as looking it up on the internet. And he is projected. To hit 19 homers and 85 RBIs this year. That's a good year. It's a really good year for a guy basically spending his first full season in the major leagues. Inside is Fister backs him out of there. The one thing that he has done better this year is in his plate appearances. He's seeing more pitches this year versus last year. And one of the things that Bosch did when he went to the batter's box last season was he swung at the very first thing that he saw just about every single AB. But this year, getting in better hitting counts, and that's why the numbers have been much better for Brennan. Now he's ahead, three and one. Much more selective this year. He's gotten himself into a lot of counts uh, like he's facing right now three balls, one strike. A predictable fastball count from most pitchers. Doesn't mean Fister's going to throw a fastball, but if he does, Brennan should get loose on him. He wants him. So Fister now finding some trouble here in the first. 
Single and a walk. They got the big fella strolling in now. Miguel Cabrera. Really know where to put the big fella right now who is one of the best hitters in all of baseball with runners in scoring position. All of baseball. Cabby has hit safely in his last seven. Eric Wedge looking over the numbers and thinking, uh oh. Cabrera's been money with runners in scoring position this year. He has knocked in 45. And he bounces one to third. This might be a double play. There's one. And there's two. Not this time. They get him to roll into the 5 3 twin killing. Heritage and by Arby's stop by today and try the new Shroomin Swiss sandwich Arby's it's good mood food Still no score as Verlander climbs back on top of the hill to the top of the second we go and Franklin Gutierrez will lead it off for Seattle It'll be Gutierrez Carp and then Hallman against the Tigers ace They got an infield hit in the first inning, but no damage done against JV and Gutierrez takes one just below the knees, 1 0. First time we've seen Gutierrez this year. Yeah, first couple of times that we ran into Seattle, he was on the disabled list. He's only played in 19 games so far. 219 batting average for Franklin. This guy can play some center field. Oh, we got two of the best center fielders in the game in the ballpark tonight. He's got pretty good numbers against Verland. He can hit a fastball. He's always had quick hands. Most guys would take 281 with a couple of homers. Fouled straight back, 1 2. Quite a few of those at bats came against Verlander when Gutierrez was playing for the Cleveland Indians and his current manager, Eric Wedge, when he was managing the tribe. I believe Gutierrez won a gold glove last year. He sure did. It was his first. Of his career. Here's the one two. And we know that it's a very expansive center field out there at Safeco in Seattle. A lot of room to cover out there, much as it is here in Detroit. 420 to dead center here at Comerica Park. And that's what makes Austin Jackson so special out there. Remember a few years ago when Gutierrez ran into that scoreboard out of the right center field? Yep. It's driven down the left field line. It is a foul ball. What a collision that was. One and two. Big lineman down there. Steelers jersey going on. Hmm. 
Maybe a linebacker. Well, he's wearing 58, which would be Jack Lambert. Here's the one two. Driven to left field and caught on the run by Andy Dirks. One gone here in the second. Who's your favorite football team growing up? Probably the Rams. Rams. Yeah, being out in Los Angeles, probably the Rams. Yeah. Deacon Jones and the boys. Roman Gabriel. Old school. Yeah. Mike Carp, the batter, who at Tacoma had some really good numbers. Some really big power numbers. Last couple of years. They say he's got some sock in his bat, and he basically forced his way onto this current roster because offensively they had struggled as a team all year. There's a ball outside, 1 0. Well, they didn't have any guys in Tacoma like this guy on the mound tonight, number 35. Carp one out of four after being called up from Triple A. Missed it outside. Two balls, no strikes on Mike Carp. One out of the second, no score. Seattle in town, and then on Monday, Tampa comes in for a makeup game. Big swing, two and one. And then Cleveland. Swing and a miss again. Two balls, two strikes, 95 from Verlander there. Two fastballs right down the middle, right at the belt buckle. Very difficult to catch up with that pitch. Easy gas. Carp would not go fishing after that one. <laughs> you know it was coming. Getting killed by the truck right now. They probably fed it to you. Well, to be honest with you, yes. No, I got you. <laughs> they probably fed it to you. I took the bait. There's a base runner now, one on one out, Verlander. I'm glad they told you because I probably would have took the bait too. <laughs> First walk for JV. Yeah, I'm sure Carp hasn't heard that that one before. That's got to be a new one for him. Here's Greg Hallman. This young man here's got some athleticism. They say he's got some skills. Can run. Oh, he got him at first base. Is out of there. Verlander with a clean pick. Very quick feet for Verlander. Carp was not going anywhere, but he still got picked off. But take a look at where the throw was taken from Cabrera. We'll give you one more look at it, and that's the key to tagging guys out at first base. Is as a first baseman, you let the ball travel all the way to the bag and simply drop the tag on the right hand of the base run. So they're empty now. Hallman looks at a strike. Here you go. Take a look at where Cabrera takes the ball. I mean, he lets the ball travel all the way, and all you got to do is simply drop the glove on the right hand. Nicely done by Verlander and Miguel. Slice to right field. Bosch cruising over, and just like that, the inning is over. No runs, a walk, nobody left. One and a half in the books, no score.
this here tonight. Victor Martinez will lead things off. Martinez, then Dirks, and then Peralta facing the right hander Doug Fister, who bailed himself out of a jam by getting Cabrera to hit into a double play, ending the first. First pitch is low to Victor. Martinez coming in at 350 over his last 34 games. Here's the 1 0. A high strike as Martinez looks back at home plate umpire and uh, Victor on the road trip in six games, 348. Very nice. Strike call. Corey Blazer up with the right hand again, and the count goes to one and two. And missed inside. Two balls, two strikes. Good idea uh, by Fister. Uh, going inside with two strikes on Victor. Lifted in the air. Left center field, not deep. Hallman is under it. One gone. Hey, fans, this July, baseball's biggest stars will gather together in Arizona desert for one spectacular night this summer's biggest event. As Fox brings you every thrilling moment of the 2011 MLB All Star Game, coverage begins Tuesday, July 12th, live from Phoenix at 8 p.m. Eastern on your local Fox station. Tiger fans need to start voting here. Yes, they do. Get some of these Tigers in the All Star game. Dirks fouls it off, 0 1. Andy batting 260, three home runs this year at the major league level. A little bit of speed, good defender. Here's the 0 1. Foul straight back, 0 and 2. Fisker came into this one averaging about six strikeouts per nine innings. And as we mentioned, not really getting a whole lot of run support. Therefore, he doesn't have as many wins as he should. Got him. Strike three. Dirks caught looking. Two gone. That's what he's been doing a lot of. That little swing back fastball at about 92 miles an hour. It's been a very effective pitch for him. You can really see the movement on that pitch. You don't have to throw 95 96 miles an hour to really be effective in the major leagues. If you have four pitches like Fister and you could command all four pitches. And you're not afraid to throw those pitches in any count. You can win up here. Johnny Peralta the batter. Last time Peralta I saw this Seattle Mariners team they were crowding him with a lot of fastballs. I mean a lot of fastballs. One ball, one strike. Peralta pops it up. They're still crowding him inside. And it's going to be a one, two, three inning for Doug Fister. No runs, no hits. Nobody left.
now does for all of his home starts. I'd like to introduce you to Doy Dempsey. You're a veteran yourself. Tell us a little bit about the service that you uh, gave our country. Well, I, uh, I served one tour in Iraq as a Marine, and then I went back there uh, just this fall and actually uh, served as a civilian again. So. Talk a little bit about this experience. You're able to do it with your friends, your family, watch one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball. What's it been like for you? Oh, uh, this has been an awesome experience. I mean, me and my friends, we got a luxury suite. I mean, we're watching Verlander pitch at Comerica Park. Al Kaline came up and shook my hand. He even wrote on me. Anyway, needless to say, I'm, I'm pumped to be here. All right, thanks so much, Dwayne. Thank you for your service. I'm glad you're having a good night. Mario and Rod, I'll send it back to you. Shannon, thank you. That's great to see some of the most important Americans we have enjoying the ball game, courtesy of Justin Verlander. What a, uh, a great, great thing for Justin to do. No doubt about that. Those guys really seem to be enjoying the ball game, and they, they always do. That fellow got choked up talking about Mr. Kaline. He did indeed. Verlander back to the hill here as we go to the third. He is facing Luis Rodriguez. Rodriguez, then Wilson, then Ichiro. Justin gave up an infield hit in the first, a walk in the second, but no damage done either time. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Rodriguez. Has had only four at bats career against Verlander. He's had two hits in those four at bats. I think just a buck 74 this year. Driven high in the air toward right. That ball is hooking down the line and it will go foul. Eric Wedge no different than most managers when you're going up against a top of the rotation guy like Justin Verlander you look over the numbers and you see if there's anybody on your roster that has had any kind of success against him and if there is you run them out there for sure because they are few and far between. Eric Wedge the 18th manager in the history of the Seattle Mariners. He was manager of the year a few years ago in the. American League when he was managing the Cleveland Indians. High pop up, shallow left field. Dirk's coming on. And he'll make the play. One gone. Time to go back to the studio now for a game break. Here's Mickey York. All right, Mickey, thank you. Here, still no score as we play in the top of the third. And a ball inside to Jack Wilson. Wilson at 252. Good numbers this year against Detroit. And a strike called. One and one. Foul straight back. Well, they've been getting a lot of production out of the number nine spot in their lineup this year. Look at these ranks. A 286 average out of the nine hole. That's awfully good. That it is. They need to get those kind of numbers out of their first two guys, though Suzuki and uh, Figgins. Absolutely. 10 for 16 in their last five games. That's fouled off. Sean Figgins still has not approached the numbers he had as an angel, which has really kind of hampered their offense. Because they built this team around speed. They felt that when they had Ichiro and Figgins at the top, they could create some havoc. Just hadn't worked out that way for Sean. Let's tap slowly in front of the plate. Avila, good play. Wilson is out. You don't see infield taken very often in the major leagues, but this is one of the plays that the catchers practice when taking infield practice. They come up, they barehand it, they wheel, they throw. They do it a couple of different ways. Very nicely done by Avila.
That'll bring out the top of the order now, Ichiro. Ichiro Suzuki hitting about 60 points lower than his career average. I was kind of surprised when I saw his numbers preparing for this game tonight. You don't expect him to be hitting in the 250 range this late into the season. And the traveling party uh, with the Mariners, they say he's struggling right now. He's behind 0 and 2. I mean, when you start talking about what this young man has done for 10 straight years in the majors, an all star every year, a gold glove winner every year, he was rookie of the year, he's going to get 3,000 hits stateside, I believe. Well, he got his 2300th hit in late May. He's in fabulous shape. But since the middle of May, he's only been hitting 157. Verlander backs him out of there up high, one and two. And Ichiro is one of those few guys that has compiled some really good numbers against JV. 364 coming in. Two and two. He's chased him inside with a couple of really good firm fastballs in the upper 90s. Maybe a good fading changeup will get him to roll over to second again. Swing and a miss. Steady dusted him at 98. Verlander has his second strikeout. It's a 1 2 3 inning. Four city and four day tour. That's pretty impressive. Absolutely. And it's winding up tonight here in Detroit. Papa and me. Awesome. Right now, the Mariners and Tigers are scoreless. So they'll be able to add, hopefully, a Tiger victory to that tote board. Fister back to work. Avila hammers the first pitch. Right center field hit well. Gutierrez going back. He'll look at this one. Ground to the wall. Avila's going to try for three. Here comes the throw, and he's set. It got by the third baseman, Rodriguez, and a triple for Alex. Look out, Alex. Alex had another gear. Aggressive, very aggressive on the changeup that he got from Fister and absolutely drilled. And once he got towards second base, he didn't even really look to Gene Lamont. He just kind of headed toward third base and was able to make it there with a triple. He doesn't get many triples. You got as good a shot as any in baseball to get a triple if you hit it to that wall here at Comerica in right center field. What I like about that base running right there is that ball was in front of Avila. He could see where that ball was. He didn't have to look all the way over to Gene Lamont, the third base coach, for him to tell him 
Okay, you come over here. I like that. Rayburn pops it right up to the first baseman Kennedy and is unable to score the run. One out. Let's take one more look at Avila. When he's running, he's looking to the ball and he's made up his mind by himself what he's going to do. That's one of the things that kind of gets lost in high school and even in college where the base runners, they just rely on the third base coach way too much to tell them what they should be doing when they can really see where the ball is themselves. By the way, that is the second career triple for Avila and both of them have come this season. Here's Jackson trying to get that run in. And fought that one off foul and one. Alex is uh, one of those guys you were talking about uh, earlier that uh, Tigers fans need to get to the all-star ballot box and start filling it up with his name. Well, Avila nine homers and uh, 32 RBIs. He has hung around the 280, 290, 300 mark most of the year. Bouncing ball foul. 0 oh, 2 on Jackson. Austin bounced out back in the first inning on a really good play by the first baseman, a diving play by Adam Kennedy. One and two. Eric Wedge playing his defenders at uh, number three depth in the infield. You know, they want to make Avila make the decision as to whether he's going to come home on anything on the ground. They're not going to make it easy for him. I mean, you have some times where you play in the cut of the grass. That would be number one. Just to give you an example, a little deeper is two. Then you've got three, and then all the way back would be four. And he got him. Fister catches him looking for strike three and a big, big strikeout. The second of the game. Pretty good firm fastball at 92 by Fister. Cut fastball. It's the one that uh, he has been throwing. Borderline, but probably too close for Jackson to take for strike three. Infield back now with two outs. Strike one to Kelly. Fisker methodically trying to pitch out of this leadoff triple jam. Here's the 0 1. To right field. Ichiro is there and Fister mission accomplished. Tigers waste the leadoff triple. Good cookies. 
Back here at Comerica Park in a scoreless ball game. Alex Avila a leadoff triple in the third, but his teammates unable to get him home. Therefore, it is still a 0-0 game. And Justin Verlander in the fourth inning will face Brendan Ryan, Adam Kennedy, and Miguel Olivo. Infield single for Ryan back in the first inning. He has the only Seattle hit. He had a great hit bat. Saw quite a few pitches from Verlander in the first inning before getting that infield single. It was a 10 pitch at bat. And he also caught the Tigers napping defensively by running to second base when nobody was covering. Ryan, the former St. Louis Cardinal, digs in to start the fourth. The Verlander's last loss came against the Seattle Mariners back on the 27th of April. Gave up four runs in that game in six innings. He has not lost since. Here's the one one swing and a miss. One and two. And Brendan Ryan. Olivo. Or I should say Verlander ready sends home the deuce which misses outside. It'll be Ryan Kennedy and Olivo here in the fourth inning for Seattle. An M's team that uh, certainly has not. Impressed offensively but pitching wise they are second in the league. They're dead last in hitting and there's a wave and a miss. The American League West. Has some of the best pitching in baseball collectively the entire division. They've got some really good teams out there that can pitch. Seattle two and a half out. Angels five and a half out. Oakland really, really struggling. And all of a sudden they find themselves eight game out. They've lost nine straight out west. Kennedy the batter. He popped up back in the first. Oh and two. Kennedy last year was over in the National League with the Washington Nationals. Played in 135 games there. Has played second, first, and has DH'd this year for Seattle. Played in the World Series with the Angels. Kennedy, in fact, was originally a St. Louis Cardinal and was traded to the Angels in a deal involving Jim Edmonds, who went on to have some really good years with St. Louis. Here's the 2 2. 3 2 on Adam Kennedy. There's Olivo waiting on deck. Soft serve out to left field, base hit. What a nice piece of hitting. You really can't make a better pitch than Verlander made right there at 96 miles an hour. And Kennedy went down and got it. Seattle with its second hit of the game, one on one out. Here comes Olivo. Olivo struck out ending the first inning. There's the strike called, and Olivo thought he was given time. Verlander looked like he balked. That's what he was calling. I don't know what he did, but it looked awkward to me. 
I hope he wasn't caught in between throwing that ball to first base and throwing it home. Take a look at this. He got away with it though. Uh, oh, clear ball. Wow. Swing and a miss. No, I'm serious about what I said. I, I hope he wasn't thinking about throwing that ball to first base and still throw that ball home. He's had that problem. He, he really has. But it was, uh, where was that, Oakland? When he threw it at the Hastings? Yeah, yeah. Ver Verlander picked off Cart back in the second. And now has 19 since 06. The 19 pickoff the most for a right handed pitcher. Oh, and two on Miguel Olivo. He's knocked in 18 in his last 18 games. And he waves and misses. So Olivo is out of there. Third strikeout for Verlander. So take it back. Fourth strikeout for Verlander. I shorted you one. Here comes Gutierrez. Franklin flat out his first time up. Seattle as a team is batting 229, which is not only the lowest average in the American League, but the lowest it would be as well in the National League. And so they have had to get it done with their pitching, and they certainly have two horses at the top in Felix Hernandez and Michael Pineda. Fisker has pitched well, has not gotten a whole lot of offensive support. Chris Chambliss, their hitting coach, his first year. With Seattle under wedge. Swing and a miss. One and two. There are the lowest batting averages. But their pitching has kept them afloat two games over the 500 mark. Even Bedard who is throwing in tomorrow's game. Eric Bedard has thrown well this year. One and two. And that is fouled off. So Carl Willis has to be pleased with the way his staff is performing. Carl Willis has the same kind of staff that he had when he was in Cleveland with Eric Wedge when they had CC Sabathia, Cliff Lee, Jake Westbrook. Here's Carl, former Tiger, pitched briefly on the 84 Championship Club. One and two on Franklin Gutierrez. Kennedy at first base. He has singled earlier in the inning. Both hits tonight for Seattle are singles. He stayed away from him. Two balls, two strikes on Franklin. Gutierrez missed the good portion of the first part of this year, 41 games to be exact, with a stomach problem. They just really could not diagnose. Lost a lot of weight. Lost a lot of power. Off the end of the bat, right to Verlander. And he'll get him out of the inning, side retired. No runs and a hit, one man left. Coming up for the Tigers, Bosch, Cabrera, Martinez.
Well, the battery sharing a laugh in a scoreless game. By the way, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game tonight, presented by the Ingus Third Pounder using your cell phone. Text Tigers followed by space, the player's uniform number to 37338. Or you can vote online at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Fister back of the hill in a scoreless game in the fourth, and Brennan Bosch leads it off for Detroit. Bosch, Cabrera, Martinez. You're looking at the three, four, and five hitters in Jim Leland's lineup tonight. That's line toward left field, slicing fair. It'll go to the corner. Extra bases for Bosch, who motors to second base, and he's in with a leadoff double. Tigers have their third hit. Last inning, they could not get in a leadoff triple. Nice piece of hitting there by Brennan Bosch. A little tailing fastball away from him. He stayed with it, kept his hands head down, excuse me, and that ball landed just inside the foul pole. Foul line, I should say. Here's Cabrera. Two of the three Tigers hits tonight for extra bases. And Miguel cuts and misses. So that extra base streak continues for Detroit. All 62 games they've had at least one extra base hit. And the 0 1. Bouncing ball hit to the right side. To his left. Wilson throws him out. Advance the runner to third base. It's a quality at bat by Cabrera. I'm not sure whether he was trying to do that or not. He'll get quite a few high fives from his teammates when he gets back in that dugout, though. Runner on second, nobody out, advancing the runner to third. But he really gets paid to drive him in. So he'll give Victor Martinez a chance to drive him in. Infield in once again for Eric Wedge on the right side of the infield. A little bit more relaxed on the left side. Shortstop in third base. With Verlander on the mound tonight, Eric Wedge is not going to give the Tigers anything offensively. Can't blame him, though. Well, with his way or the way his offense has produced this year, especially going against Verlander, it may not take too many to win. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Victor flight out his first time. Bosch a leadoff double standing at third now with one out. Let's we'll slap that one out of play two and one. You'll see players on occasion do what Brennan Bosch is doing by holding the batting gloves in his hands. And the reason for that is Brennan has a problem when he slides feet first. He sort of jams his wrist. And every now and then you can sprain your wrist or hurt your wrist by not having something in your hands. And that's why Brennan has batting gloves in both of his hands. The 2 1. Lifted in the air to center, not deep. He can throw. Gutierrez coming in, lines it up. Bosch not going anywhere as Gutierrez fires a bullet to home plate. He won a gold glove last year. That was not deep enough. Tigers have squandered a few opportunities already in this game against Fister with a runner on third, less than two outs. Dirks with two outs popped him up. Looks like Olivo will have room, and he does. And the Tigers strand another extra base hit. When we come back, we'll check in with Shannon. He's checking out some of the ballpark food.
hot dog or some kind of food. Marino next to me, he's got nachos. Lauren's got some fries. And Comerica Park does have some really fantastic food. I want to give you guys some numbers. Comerica Park actually sells more than 5,000 of these hot dogs and kosher dogs pretty much every game. They go through a lot of soda as well. I've got myself a little souvenir cup. More than 1,500 people are having cups like this. They go through a lot of nachos, almost 1,500 nachos. Pizza, also a big seller. So even if you're not a huge baseball fan, go with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Come get some great food. It's a great ballpark. And on a night like this, you just can't beat it. Mario and Rod, I'll send it back to you. No, you're right, Shannon. You, uh, you can't beat it, and you're making us hungry. So thanks for that. There's nothing like a ballpark hot dog. In my mind, there isn't at least. Verlander back to work. And there's a strike called on Mike Clark who leads it off. I could go for a ballpark dog right now. A little mustard. A few onions. We can get you one. <laughs> As I'm putting it out, I'm hoping someone comes through. One ball, one strike. Tigers have squandered a couple of opportunities. Lead off triple, lead off double, last two innings. Popped up, shallow left, Peralta back, Dirk's in. Andy with the catch. One out here in the fifth. Verlander giving up an infield single in the first, a walk in the second, and let's see, a single in the fourth. Greg Hallman steps in. He flied out his first time up. Little tapper hit foul down the third base line. Two balls, one strike on Greg Hallman. Recently called up on June 2nd from Tacoma. He is a native of the Netherlands. There's the 2 1. Swing and a miss. 2 2 on Hallman. Driven to center field, base hit, soft liner, one on, one out. Hey, fans, see the Tigers play the Mariners tomorrow night and Saturday at 7.05 and enjoy a post-game fireworks display each night. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or log on to tigers.com. Here comes Luis Rodriguez. That's the third hit of the game now for Seattle. Each team with three hits. Tigers have had the better scoring chances. There's a strike from Verlander 0 and 1 on Rodriguez. He spent all of last year in AAA in the White Sox system at Charlotte. He signed as a minor league free agent this offseason by Seattle. Previous big league time with the Minnesota Twins in the Central Division. Runner goes on 0 1. Here comes Avila's throw. Not in time. So Holman swipes a bag. They get a man into scoring position. Holman had a pretty good jump, and on top of that, it was a curveball to Avila, you know, which meant they really didn't have an opportunity to throw him out. First stolen base for Greg Hallman. That'll be his second career steal. 
So the M's with a man in scoring position with one out. And JV missing outside. Two and one. Jack Wilson waiting on deck. Now Rodriguez given time three balls two strikes from the fifth inning in a scoreless game game one in this four game series. Driven to right field, right at Bosch. Runner tagging. Hallman coming to third. And he'll move up with two gone. Hallman's got some speed. Some really good speed. There's Jack Wilson. You gotta be careful with a guy like Wilson in this situation, even with two outs, he likes to bunt. He's a good bunter. He can bunt for a base hit. It's a risky play, but it's a good play on every now and then against a guy like Verlander. Wilson bounced one right in front of the plate his last time up. The Vila threw him out, and he looks at strike one. No runs, three hits. Seattle, no runs, three hits for the Tigers. We're in the top of the fifth. Wilson didn't play a whole lot last year. Hamstring problem. Fractured hand as well. Now he's behind in the count 0 and 2. Four strikeouts so far for Verlander tonight. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Missed it high. One and two. Each row waiting on deck. And the one two got by Avila and he can't grab the ball and the run will score and Wilson is safe at first base. What a bad break there for the Tigers one nothing Seattle. Avila had no shot at catching that ball. Definitely went around for the strikeout. He had a shot, maybe, of getting the runner at home plate, but he couldn't grab it. Jim Leland came out momentarily. Don't know exactly what he said to Corey Blazer, the home plate umpire, but he may have asked him, Was the ball fouled off? I can't think of him asking him anything else. It'll go down as a strikeout and a wild pitch. 
five strikeouts for Verlander. First run of the game. Ichiro hits one on the ground to second on the backhand. Rayburn. That'll end the inning. Ichiro is 0 for 3. You're watching Tigers baseball presented tonight by Bell Tire. Casino Hotel a million miles away right down the street. That's how the first run of the game scored. On a strikeout wild pitch runner coming in from third base and Doug Fisker has a one nothing lead in this one. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning Johnny Peralta Alex Avila Ryan Raber in the bottom three in Jim Leland's lineup. Johnny 0 for 1 with a pop up. He slowed down a bit in that series. Against the Texas Rangers had eight hits on the road trip. Johnny's still batting over 300 for the year. Fisker is ahead 0 2. Soft liner to left. That's a base hit. Lead off singles. Check in with uh, Shannon Hogan. She's cruising around the ballpark. Shannon. Actually, I'm right behind you, you guys. Ask and you shall receive. Uh. <laughs> I've got the hot dogs for you. I couldn't find any onions down there. I don't know where they are, but I'll put them here. You guys can snack. You're working hard. Wow. I appreciate Shannon. it. Like I said, not. Sometimes I bring them cookies. Today was better though. They got hot dogs. So good looking out. Enjoy. Awesome. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the top of the seventh. <laughs> Excellent. We can always count on Shannon. We'll first. take the ice cream in top of the seven. She did the uh, feature a little bit earlier on the uh, the food here at the ballpark. So it made us hungry and she uh, completed the task now by getting us some food. Excellent. Alex Avila, the batter. She ought to get the hustle award of the day. Well, I hope she didn't pay for him because if she did, I owe her a couple of bucks. I'd be glad to pay. Avila had a triple back in the third inning. One nothing Seattle. Tigers get the leadoff man on here in the fifth inning. Here's the 0-1. High towering fly ball, right center field. Hit a ton. Gutierrez back. He looks up. It's off the wall. Here comes Peralta rounding third. Avila is on his way to third base. They'll stop him there. Triple RBI and Avila is in two triples tonight. That one was hammered.
absolutely killed that 101 fastball. And if Gutierrez in center field can't run it down, there's not many in center field that can run it down. Man, what a pretty stroke that guy has these days. I think Gene Lamont was entertaining the thought of yep. sending him home. I really think you're right. They they got the relay in short center field as Avila was hitting the bag at third. It would have been a close play. Take a peek here at Gene Lamont. He's entertaining the thought, and he wisely says, no, just stay here on the bag. Now Rayburn has to get him in. And he shoots one to right field. That is a... Foul ball. 0 2 on Rayburn. It's a shame you have to hit a ball as far as Avila hit that one and still hustle to get a triple. When you hit him that far, you ought to be able to trot around the bases. Fifth hit of the game, and now Avila with a couple of three baggers in this game, still catching his breath. He's had to do some running tonight. And the 0-2 swing and a miss, and Rayburn is out of there. Fisker gets a strikeout. It's the third strikeout of the game for Fister. The last catcher to have two triples in a game, Brad Osmus, 1999. Last Tigers catcher to do that. Osmus had some good speed for a catcher. Here's Jackson. Bouncing ball right side. They will not get the run in here. Wilson covers for an awkward looking out two away. So Avila stays anchored at third base. Here's Don Kelly. One for two for Kelly. Line drive, base hit. What a clutch two out knock, and the way, Tigers have the lead. Way to pick your teammates up. Sixth RBI of the year for Kelly, and it's 2 1 Detroit. Nice little lob into shallow left center field. Tigers now have six hits. They'll bring up Brennan Bosch. Verlander finally getting some offense in this one. Wave and a miss by Bosch. You go back a little bit farther, in fact, quite a bit farther. September of 1980, Lance Parrish also had two triples in a game on September 27th. The big wheel? The big wheel was rolling around the bases on that day. They both wear the same number, number 13. So with Vila with a couple of three baggers, this time they got him in. One and one on Bosch. High towering drive right field. It is hooking. That ball lands. Fair. It's a home run. Bosch homers again. Number eight for Brennan. A little breaking ball. 
foul there from Fisher that didn't do a whole lot. And Brennan has really found that power stroke lately. Two run shot for Bosch, and now it's a 4 1 ball game. What a night for Bosch. Look at his numbers in his last four. A walk, a double, and a homer. There's a soft liner caught by Wilson. So the Tigers get four, and we go to the sixth. Player who is second on that list. Ichiro since 01, since uh, bursting out of the scene, has had more hits. Number two on that list is your mission tonight. Meanwhile, the Tigers lead four to one now as they put all four runs up. In the bottom of the fifth inning, to the top of the sixth we go. It'll be Brendan Ryan leading it off. Ryan, then Kennedy, and then Olivo facing the right hander Justin Verlander. Strike one from Verlander. Ryan, an infield hit in the first to strike out of the fourth. Verlander is 13 of 20 in first pitch strikes tonight against the Seattle Mariners. One of the reasons why he's able to maneuver through this offense when you get ahead, your chances increase greatly at expanding the strike zone and getting them to swing at your pitch. Justin pitching with the lead for the first time tonight. This Mariners team, you'd think they'd have to go out and get some bats to help out that pitching staff, you would think, at some point in time here real soon. Waving a miss, and down he goes. Well, the closer you get to the trading deadline, and if they stay in it with their pitching, which you would assume they would, yeah, they're going to have to. Because that division is still up for grabs. The question is what they have at the minor league level and what they are willing to part with. Well, you don't get an opportunity to win very often. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're one, two games up or back at the trade deadline and your offense is still sputtering along, hey, you might need to give up a couple of pieces to get you a really nice bat to see if you can stay in the race. Adam Kennedy, the batter. Lifting that one back out of play, one ball and one strike. Adam Kennedy has always had that classic uppercut swing. We look at the 98 mile power reading that Verlander has registered tonight. 
He'll drop in for a base hit right in front of Brennan Bosch. One on one out. Back to the studio we go. Game break time. Here's Mickey York. All right, Mick, thank you very much. Here it is four to one Detroit. Kennedy now has two of the four Seattle hits and he draws the throw. Olivo's had a tough night. He has struck out twice in the first and the fourth. Two of the six recorded tonight by JV. And he cuts and misses on a high fastball. Furlander has picked a runner off. That was Carp back in the second. He's keeping an eye on Kennedy, who is six for six in stolen base opportunities. Olivo again overmatched at 95 miles an hour, 0 2. He can't catch up to that high gas that Verlander's featuring here tonight. And if you're Vila, you may as well call for another one. Just get a little bit higher. Olivo's done a nice job offensively. He's always been known as an offensive catcher, but they say defensively he's uh, got a little bit older, a little bit wiser since the first time he was with Seattle, which was in 04 and 05. And pitcher's ERA with Olivo catching is 2.74. ball and down he goes. He has struck out three times tonight. Verlander has seven overall. One thing Verlander hasn't been doing a whole lot of lately, and that's striking out a ton of batter, batters. Verlander's been pitching to a lot of contact, and he's been allowing the opposing teams to put the ball in play, and that's why he's pitched very deep in games. Pitch count has been very manageable for Verlander pretty much all year. Here's Gutierrez. He cuts and misses. Change piece at 86. Remarkable talent. Remarkable talent. Gutierrez is over two. And he's reached the 100 plateau here in the sixth inning. As a rule of thumb as a starting pitcher you want to be anywhere from 15 pitches or below per inning. As you can see most of Verlander's innings here today above 15 pitches. Tigers bullpen is fresh tonight. The back end especially. Albuquerque Benoit and Valverde. Tried to hold up unable to do it. And One Berlander or two. will need some help tonight. Excuse me. Verlander in his last start threw 112, but he got through eight innings in that game. So much different. 132 the time before that. A career high, as a matter of fact. The 132. That was against Boston. Just missed with that one. Two balls, two strikes. 
He's a horse. He threw more pitches than anybody in the American League last year. And just about every single year he's up there in strikeouts and most pitches thrown. And the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Gutierrez is out of there. Eight Verlander strikeouts. Has picked off more. Coors Light Freeze Cam is always brought to you by your Frost Brew Coors Light. And the Tigers bring a four to one lead into the bottom of the sixth inning tonight. It'll be Victor Martinez, Andy Dirks, and Johnny Peralta facing the right hander, Doug Fister. Tigers this evening have four runs, seven hits, and Seattle a run on four hits. And the one thing that the Tigers have made Fister do tonight, they've made him get the ball up in the strike zone. For the most part, he's a sinker ball slider guy that works south of the knees, but they've gotten some really good swings on balls that have been up. His offense has also failed to get him uh, much going tonight. They average about two and a half per game when he pitches. Well, they're facing Verlander tonight, which has a lot to do with it. You got that right. And they've gotten only one run. That was a gift. Victor's knees buckled there. Two balls, one strike. Seattle's only run scoring on a wild pitch on a strikeout with a runner at third base. So that would qualify in the gift category. Victor trying to slow down Fister, who has that uh, really good rhythm going. And the 2 1. Good pitch. No deceleration in the arm speed. 82 miles an hour. Change up. You don't see Victor look like that very often when taking a swing. Ground ball, first base side, gobbled up there by Adam Kennedy. One gone. Time to check in with Shannon Hogan. Shannon, uh, take it away. You know what, guys? We talked about coming to the ballpark to watch baseball, to have great food, but also you never know. We saw that Brennan Bosch to run homer, and I met Jacqueline. She actually grabbed the ball. The first ball you've ever gotten here before. When the ball was coming towards you, what was going through your mind, and how did you end up with it? I was thinking, wow, this would be like really cool if I could catch it. So I just decided to push everybody 
away and I threw my arm out there and I grabbed it and I got lucky. So you're here with your friends and your husband. Where's the ball going to go when you get home? Probably on our office desk um, and displayed properly because uh, we are very big Detroit Tigers fans and couldn't be any happier. So. All right. Well, good good fun here. Congratulations on grabbing the ball. One other thing, you guys, birthdays. I got a whole bunch of people with birthdays over here. Nick, Eric, and Ryan all celebrating their birthday. Jack as well. So, you know, come to the park. Celebrate your birthday. Catch a foul ball. It's all good. Catch a home run, too. All right, Santa, thanks. We'd sing happy birthday, but we can't sing. So uh, they'll just have to accept our congratulations on that. 0-2 oh, on Andy Dirks. He skies one of the air. Shallow right center. Gutierrez is there. Hey fans, come see the Tigers battle the Seattle Mariners this Sunday at 105 and enjoy another Sunday Kids Day. Fans 14 and under receive a Max Scherzer bobblehead. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or log on to tigers.com. I got a look at that bobblehead earlier today. It is really authentic. There it is. Check out the eyes. One's blue, one's brown. Now that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And it's the first time I've ever seen a close up of a bobblehead. Now check out the eye color. You know, there were some people that were tweeting me the condition that he has last night. Yeah, I got a ton of those. And I looked at it, I still can't pronounce it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't want to give it a shot? I can't even. I, I tried last night. I'm like, eh, I'm not even going to give it a shot. Thank you guys for tweeting that, though. Appreciate it. You going you can say it though. Yeah, I gotta look it up again. I have to see the word. Broke his bat. That'll roll to the shortstop. And Ryan will throw him out. One, two, three inning for Fister out of the seventh we go. Here comes JV to the bottom. Since 2001, of course, Derek is going to get to 3,000 this year. He's 11 shy as we speak. Good work there. So Ichiro is number one, and Jeter number two. By the way, that uh, condition that Scherzer has? Yes. Heterochromia iridium. One don't more time? I, don't, no, no, no. You're done. That's it. <laughs> you get one shot. That's Come on, it. one more game. No. Heterochromia iridium. Outstanding. I'm hoping that's correct. Max would know. I've got like 7,000 tweets here. All right, here we go in the seventh inning, four to one. Tigers have the lead, and Verlander delivers strike one to Mike Karp. Karp then Hallman and then Rodriguez. Only four hits surrendered by Verlander. The hook is in for a strike on the outer edge, 0 2.
16 first pitch strikes at a 24. Line drive to left right at Dirks. One out. Now Hallman coming up. Hallman's got some massive power. Last year at Tacoma, he hit 33 home runs. He has scored the only Seattle run tonight, singled stole a base, and that eventually came around on a wild pitch. Did you say 33 home runs in Tacoma? In Tacoma. That is not a, a hitter friendly ballpark. There are a few in the PCL. Tacoma's not one of them. It's a lot of taters. Swings right through it. 33 homers in 112 games with Tacoma. Ooh, that's damage. Serious damage. Here's a 1 1. I guess my only question is why in the world was this guy in the big leagues last year as badly as they struggled offensively? Don't know. He came up briefly and played a few games at the major league level, but not a whole lot. Swing and a miss. He went chasing there. And perhaps that's part of your answer. Yeesh. And he knew it. Verlander with another strikeout, nine on the night now for JV. Which I believe equals his season high. It does. Here's Luis Rodriguez. A couple of fly balls off the bat of Rodriguez tonight, one to left and one to right. The 1 0. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Rodriguez big league time with Minnesota as we mentioned and San Diego briefly and now Seattle. The 2 1. Popped him up. This one heading back down the third base line and Kelly makes the play. 1 2 3 in. Stretch time at the ballpark. 4 to 1.
Justin Verlander has been in command tonight. The Tigers have supported him with four runs. And it's a four to one ball game as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Alex Avila has been a big part of the offense tonight. Two triples and an RBI. He's also scored a run. Avila, Rayburn, and Jackson. Alex up to 297 now with 33 RBIs. Fister ready with the 2-0. That's outside. Three balls, no strikes. His pitch count tonight's been in great shape. It's only at 73 right now. And Avila takes his walk. Hey fans, when the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live as we bring you all the highlights, reaction, and analysis. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios and here at the ballpark immediately after the game on Fox Sports Detroit. Call Sam back up and running tonight, I guess. Huh? I hope so. <laughs> it's nice when it is. <laughs> Let the pros do the post game show. Yeah, they're gifted at that. Here's Rayburn. Raven to pop up in a strikeout. Nice long look by Raven down at Gene Lamont. Let's see if they're doing anything. Raven fanned after the Avila triple. Back in the third, and he popped up after the Avila triple in the fifth inning, so he's had a couple of chances to drive in a run. Now we'll see if there's a play on here with Avila at first base this time. He takes a strike. And Ryan kind of going through one of those stretches right now where he's taking the good pitches to hit and swinging at the bad pitches. Anybody that's ever played the game, well, they've been there. It's just one of those things. Bouncing ball to short. This looks like a double play. Taylor made. 6 4 3, 2 gone. Bring up the top of the order now, Austin Jackson. So Fister, really, aside from one bad inning, has pitched a whale of a game tonight. He gave up a two run homer to Bosch and RBIs to Kelly and Avila. Ball one to Jackson. Driven to center field, Gutierrez. And that'll end the inning. No runs, a walk, nobody left. Tigers baseball tonight is presented by Bell Tire.
game, you'll notice a very bright, girlish backpack. Sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's green. Right now, Adam Wilk has it, but before him, Charlie Furbush had it. Now, these guys have it because the guys with the least amount of experience in Major League pitching have to carry it. Right now, that's Adam Wilk. But it was a little bit of a struggle for Wilk to get it because uh, Charlie Furbush actually forgot it here in the Tigers clubhouse before they went to Chicago. That wasn't good. The rest of the pitchers were not happy because that backpack has gum and all kinds of stuff for them when they're out here. They actually FedExed the backpack all the way to Texas so that Adam Wilk could have it, and he's the one that has it now. Guys, I'll send it back to you. All right, Shannon, thanks. A Hello Kitty backpack. you got to love that. They try and make it as obnoxious as possible so it stands out as much as possible. When you're a rookie, you're always hoping that someone else comes up with less time than you <laughs> so they can walk down <laughs> to the bullpen with it on their shoulders and not yours. I do think, though, some of those guys kind of enjoy that because it, it kind of makes them feel part of the bullpen down there. I mean, they're, they're new guys typically. But it does stick out like a sore thumb, no doubt about it. Verlander answering the bell here in the eighth inning. That's popped up. Santiago, the new second baseman, hauls it in. Verlander getting stronger as this game goes on as well. In that last half inning, he threw 11 pitches, eight of which were above 96 miles an hour. 96 and above on eight of the 11 pitches he threw last half inning. He is a remarkable talent. He's retired six straight. 117 pitches into this contest. Here's Ichiro. A couple of starts ago, I was talking to Al Kaline and I asked uh, Mr. Tiger, had you ever seen anybody throw as hard as Verlander throws late in the game? And he said, two people, Nolan Ryan and Herb Score, the only two pitchers that he could remember still dialing it up late after 100 pitches. There is action in the bullpen right now. That would be Valverde and Benoit, the combination. Here's the 1 1 pitch. That's a great call. The Ichiro was kind of running out of the box there. Wicked, wicked bender here by JV. It's really not fair. Not fair at all. The 1 2. Swing and a miss. And Avila will throw down to complete the strikeout. That's an even 10 for Verlander, a season high. By the way, this week on Fox Saturday Baseball, Aramis Ramirez and the Cubs head to Philadelphia to take on Ryan Howard in the National League East, leading Phillies. This week's telecast of Fox Saturday Baseball begins at 4 p.m. on your local Fox station. You know, Brad Penny will get the ball here tomorrow night against the Seattle Mariners, and he said that he is pitching in the best spot possible in this Tigers rotation after Justin Verlander because when he goes out there, he said the bullpen is rested. He said all he has to do is go five or six innings. As is the case again tonight. As Verlander is going deep into this game. You know, they always talk about hitters uh, batting in the batting order ahead of a guy like Miguel Cabrera you're going to get plenty of good pitches to hit I guess the same holds true for pitchers if you're pitching after Verlander here's the 0 1 he couldn't hold up going to he could finish this bad boy if Leland let him and that's how much he still has left in his tank Vila wants it up soft line drive to left base hit didn't get it up high enough, I guess. And now with two outs, and it's the fifth hit of the game for Seattle. Jim Leland, hoping Verlander can get through eight. He is at 124 pitches. So you give him one more batter as Kennedy steps in. Verlander with 10 strikeouts, a season high. His career high is 13. He's done that a couple of times. Kennedy has two of the five hits that Seattle has posted tonight. Snap throw, and they almost got him. Oh, oh, oh. That was super close. It's one thing when you know a guy has a great move and very quick, and you still almost get picked off. 
that's why they tell you and we kind of got a really nice glimpse there with Ryan taking a secondary lead. You get out there and you take your secondary lead before that pitcher comes set. If you wait until he comes set and your feet are still moving towards second base, that's when you get picked off. Look at him. He's right in between stepping towards second base and he almost didn't get back. One ball, no strikes on Kennedy. Well, you'd have to believe that either way, this is Justin's last hitter. Looks like he's going to get him into shallow left field for Andy Dirks. And Verlander masterful again tonight. No runs, one hit, one left. He's pitched eight strong innings. <laughs> an app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get live audio pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text that bat to 31826 or visit tigers.com. And they're texting away here at the ballpark tonight. No doubt texting their friends. Wow, Verlander's pretty good. He's legit. Don Kelly leads it off against Fister as he answers the bell here in the eighth. It'll be Kelly, Bosch, and Cabrera. Four to one, Detroit in the lead. Pulled on the ground and backhanded by Kennedy. One out. These days, as an opponent po opposing pitcher, when you know you're going up against Verlander, you pretty much know you've got to be on top of your game because he is right now. Verlander is for me probably pitching the best I've seen him pitch in a Tigers uniform over uh, an extended period of time. Well, his ERA coming in was 304. So this would be his seventh win if they can uh, they can get it for him. I know Gondo has been pitching really well. We saw him last night. But you got to believe Verlander has a great shot to get to the All-Star game. Oh, without question. If not, they ought to do an investigation. One and one on Bosch. And Rick Knapp chilling today. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot to write down. No stress today for Rick. Bouncing ball hit toward the shortstop. Running scoop for Ryan. And they got him by a step. Two gone. Time now for the Farmers Insurance Report Card. Only players with 45 runs scored or 45 and 45 RBIs this season. There's only been two of them Miguel Cabrera and Ryan Braun over the National League for Milwaukee. That's it. A couple of impact players, impact bats. Strike one on Miguel. 
Ryan Braun is awesome. You watch him a little bit every yep. now and then. I sure do. What a talent. One ball, one strike. Fister working quickly and has all night. The one one is a breaking ball in there. By the way, Verlander's ERA is down to 2.89. So if the Tigers get three more outs here, he'll be seven and three with a 2.89. Got in on his hands, slowly toward third. And Rodriguez throws him out. One, two, three frame for Fister. We'll go to the ninth. Here comes Papa Grande. Alex Avila, his first career game with two triples. Brennan Bosch in his last four is hitting a cool 500, and you can't get a whole lot better than what Justin Verlander gave you tonight. Who's going to be the player of the game tonight? Mm, you've got Avila. You've got Verlander. You got Bosch. And you got a wall side windows pitching change with Jose Valverde. 15 saves for Papa Grande and 15 chances for. The Tigers this year, and uh, he's been legit, obviously. Opponents batting average just 202 against Valverde, 27 strikeouts in 27 innings. Good closer numbers. Miguel Olivo will lead it off for Seattle. Olivo, Gutierrez, and Park in the ninth inning. Olivo tonight. Glad to see Verlander out of the game. He struck out three times against him. Valverde, no day at the beach. Ball one. The ten strikeouts for Verlander, a season high. Hands the ball over to Papa Grande. Straight back. One ball, one strike. Casper Wells has also taken over defensively for Bosch and Wright. What did you say? There's five generations of men in his family called Ca named Casper. Yep, five Caspers in the Wells family. And the one-one. And he'll get back in his seats. One and two. New lumber for Olivo. Olivo is trying to avoid striking out for the fourth time in this game. 
He's behind one and two. You wouldn't know it by that smile on his face. No. Nope. Valverde, when he stands on the rubber, he kind of shows you that split fingered fastball grip, and then when he puts it in his hand, he changes it sometimes and then sometimes not. See you later. Split it. Four strikeouts tonight for Olivo. He was one of their hottest hitters coming in, too. Valverde didn't change the grip this time. Oh, Tumbolina. It's a tough day at the office for Olivo. One away, and that'll bring up Franklin Gutierrez. Franklin 0 for 3. Strike one. Valverde's 15 saves tied for third in the American League. Own two on Gutierrez. Tigers, when they have leads late in games, they don't give those leads up. When you have a guy like Valverde closing games for you. It is a nice luxury to have to have a guy down there that you know pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time he's going to close the deal for you. Every team doesn't have that luxury. Bouncing ball to short. Johnny Peralta. Two gone. Did you realize that Brandon League is leading the league in saves? I didn't realize that, but I know Brandon League is having a great year. Well, here comes the crowd. Papa Grande is one out away from getting his 16th save. Mike Karp, the batter. Strike one. Valverde has come out of the bullpen tonight throwing strikes. Seven of eight have hit the strike zone. The 0 1. One more to go. This crowd is into it. 22,090 the attendance here tonight making some noise The O2 Guess what Papa Grande is getting ready to do. I don't know. Is he going to do the two step? Is he going to give you a fist pump or is he going to give you a, a leg kick? He may do all of the above. All three of them tonight? I'm going to go with the leg kick. You're going to leg kick tonight. And the one, two. Low, two balls, two strikes. Uh oh, no. He's getting ready for the two step. Two step now? Yeah, he's getting right. ready for the two step. <laughs> He is entertaining, that's for certain. Gotta he love him. Needs one more strike here. Gotta love him. He's a character on the field. He's a character in the clubhouse. And he's sizing up Carp here with a 2-2 pitch. Outside three and two. He's making his weight tonight. Yes, he is. Greg Holman waiting on deck. And the 3-2. A 
Out of the way. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Detroit Tigers, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Detroit Tigers. Three and two on Mike Cart with two outs in the ninth. Inside, he walked him, and Cart keeps it going. Two out base on balls. Then we'll bring up Greg Hallman. The M's need another base runner here to bring the tying run to the plate. The crowd has hushed for the time being as Hallman digs in. He struck out against Verlander back in the seventh. Singled and scored their only run in the fifth inning. Swing and a miss. So and one. So and two. So Valverde again has reduced this game to a single strike here. Here comes the crowd again. And the O2. Ground ball, third base side. Kelly in time, and the Tigers win. <laughs> Hot dog. With mustard. Ketchup, relish, onions, too. Verlander terrific tonight. Bosch had a good game offensively. Tigers put up seven hits, and they win this one by a score of four to one. They win game one of the series as Valverde gets the save his 16th of this 2011 season. Good start to the homestand. Tigers win it tonight by a score of four to one. Plenty more coming up. Stay with us from Comerica Park.